So you want to culture some isopods? Well after this video, you'll be an expert. So what you're going to need, you're going to need some sphagnum moss, some decaying wood matter, some leaf litter and some cocoa fibre. Let me run you through how to do it. Let's start off with a shameless plug. Everything you do see will be for sale on the Northern Exotics Facebook uh, page. All the links are in the description. So for my sexy assistants this time, we're going to use the tropical grey wood lights. Now they have a couple of purposes in my um, house. We use them for either live food or bioactive cleanup crews. They work absolutely amazing at both. We feed our baby thumbnail dart frogs on the baby wood lights. They absolutely adore them. And we also culture these for sale and a bioactive cleanup crew because every bioactive vivarium needs a good ecosystem. These are a vital part of the ecosystem. These eat and live off all the decaying matter inside your bioactive vivarium along with all the bioactive waste that's made by your animals. These will just come along, gobble it up within a couple of days. But let's get on. What I've got, as you can tell, is general little bit of cocoa fibre. Not much, as you can tell, not much at all. There are some springtails in with this, but all I do now, straight forward, shake it off, level it off, and drop in some sphagnum moss. Just to add a bit of surface area for them to walk on and all that sort of, this is obviously dry, it will be wetting down a bit. And yeah, there we go. I mix the substrate up in this big tub here, and I just break it all apart and all that sort of, stuff mix it all in or attempt to yeah that'll do then a little bit of decaying wood matter i've always got one big slightly arched piece and the rest of it just goes all the way around and then the big slightly arched piece just gets dropped in on top of that the next step, we just spray it with water because the sphagnum moss will absorb an awful lot of water and it'll just make it a bit easier to mix up a bit. Here we go. And mix it up. It's a bit better. Nothing special. Uh, put a bit over there. Next stop, let me move that down. Next stop is leaf litter. Again, available on the Northern Exotics Facebook page soon. Just add a bit of that in. Just general oak leaves. Break it up if you want to. I like to. Just spread it around. It's bits of cover for them. And they'll live off the decaying matter and stuff like that. Bit more just in there, then again, spray it down. There we go. That's it, that is the substrate done. Now, time to add the isopods. So, then guys, this is inside my mother culture. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab 20 to 30 isopods out of here and put them in the new substrate. Normally, they're underneath this coconut hide. There we go. Tropical grey wood lice we're using in this feature. So all I'll do is spin around to here Drop them there and just gently tap in There we go and then put them back and There we go. They're all running off the settling into their little Hides they're having a mooch around. No, oh, look, we've got a little baby wood lace in the middle of the screen. So let's get on to their housing requirements. I keep this as a very moist. They are a tropical grey wood lice, this species. So I keep it very moist and very humid. I tend to keep the temperature at around about 87 degrees. That is, this tub is just sat on top of our boa constrictors for varium over the hot spot, and that's the temperature it stays at, and it does promote good growth. 
I've got them in a little dark tub here with a black lid. They love the dark spaces, which is why they're always underneath the coconut hide. Let's get on to the best type of food for them. There's a couple that I've found and I do like to give them a varied diet. Let's move on to them. Protected by Ting and Tong and the giraffe. Ting and Tong are protecting the food. There's a couple of different, depending on your budget. Standard fish flakes, nothing special there. And it costs a pound. Standard fish flakes, it works. All you do is take off the lid, grab a little pinch, only a pinch, crumple it all up into one corner. Put the lid back on and give it back to Ting and Tong, otherwise they'll kick my ass. The next one is roach chow, a vi wildly underused substance, but it does work. Again, just a tiny little pinch, once a week, twice a week in the corners, just a tiny pinch will do it. Once it starts molding, if it does start molding, take it out. Next one, fish pellets. Again, once they start molding, just take them out, but they are really good. And believe it or not, my channel is based on how to save money, but this is the best stuff I've found so far. Crestonia Fuel by Arcadia. Costs about $5.99, but it does last quite a while. A good six months or so. That pro promotes good breeding and fills them up nicely. I, I say that because it's the only one I've physically seen them eating. They do eat the rest, but that's what I've seen them eating. Then guys, that's it. If you have enjoyed it, please hit the thumbs up button. I'm going to play my end screen now, and uh, four videos are going to come up on the screen. If any of them take your fancy, click on them for us. Have a watch. If, they, if you like them, hit the thumbs up button on them as well. If you are new around here, I'd appreciate it if you could subscribe, just so you can see um, more content similar to this. And if you want to know when I upload, as and when I upload, please hit the notification bell right next to it. Peace out, guys. Keep on herping.